People, it's Joe, All Leeds TV, and it's time for your Leeds versus Preston post-match chat. Before we get into the video, first and foremost, I hope you all had an amazing Christmas. I did. Leeds centenary dream scene. Last pulled an absolute blinder. Uh, hence the change of scenery. I hope you like it. Uh, and let's get into the video. But before we do, please like, share, subscribe, and of course, sponsor me for Red January. It's all over my social media. Red stands for Run Every Day in January. I'm doing it for my charity. The link will be in the description. Please get involved. And if you can't, then just sponsor us, like, share, subscribe, let's chat about Preston. So, it wasn't great, we got a point, um, we were not great. Look, that first 27 minutes, I would say, was probably the worst we've seen under Bielsa, especially this season, uh, Preston deserved to go in. Uh, one nil up, one hundred percent. We were just not at the races. Uh, I thought defensively we were really poor. Luke Haley made a catalogue of errors. Liam Cooper quite fit in midweek. Phil Hay did a piece on the Athletics speaking about League One Liam and how that affected him. I get that. However, Liam was not great. Liam was going back to them levels in that first half. If you ask me, I never you know called him that. But what I'm saying is it was just. Defensively, we just weren't at the races, I felt like. You know, Kiko went full Kiko, full mental Kiko, running out and trying to challenge people. Slide tackles on the edge of his box. We were just not at the races. And Preston, they were fantastic. You know, there's some really standout performance uh, performers for me. I thought Ma Maguire was class. Um, Ports, I thought uh, Pearson really put himself about. Absolute shithouse, but he put himself about. They, they, they played really, really well. Uh, I really like Alex Neal. They did a job and, and they stuck to the task. And they're probably coming away thinking, look, we should have had maximum points if it weren't for a deflected goal from Stewie Dallas. So we've got to be happy with the point. Look, we should have won the game. I don't mean on the on, on the phase of the game itself, but prior to it, man. Everything went in our favour. Appleway Halmy gets us a late equaliser. Fulham can't win at Luton. Chef Wednesday go from 2-1 behind to losing 3-2 at Stoke. Everything's going in our favour. The pressure, I don't know what it is, guys. I just felt that half time I was sitting with pal. It's happening again. I can't deal with it. You know, when, when Preston went up, the chorus of Leeds are falling apart again happening. You know, you can't blame them because it happens all the time. So naturally, they're going to do it. You know, it's so frustrating to hear, though, because you know that we're better than what we showed today. Uh, it wasn't all bad. I thought second half we came on. We had many opportunities. Speaking to Connor and I was saying you can't take many positives from it. I can. You know, look at the second half. There was a lot of opportunities created. So we deserve to take something from the game. You could, you could say there was opportunities to win. I'm not saying we deserve to win, but, you know, we hit the post. We, we have quite a lot of the ball in the second half. I felt watching it. But listen, I'm not no massive tactician. That's just my opinion. But onto the goal itself, 21 minutes after many, many errors. I think Nugent probably should score before that. Uh, Cooper's dispossessed out on the right. It gets crossed in. Nugent can't get enough on it. I don't know if Ben White you know, managed to get a flick before him, but he should score. I expect Nugent to score in, uh, in, that, in that situation. But it's not long after they do score 21 minutes. Um, it's a great break. It's a great tackle by Maguire. It's given to Pearson. Pearson defence splitting pass. It get, makes its way to Brown and it's 1-0. Kiko's dive's a little bit suspect. Please watch it back. But the main error for me was Click. Mateus Click made the error for the goal. And the reason why is because he just dilly-dallied. And I love that word. I've seen it on on, on Twitter. I, I wrote it on my notes. It was Binky that on, from Talking Shut said Click did a lot of dilly-dallying today. And he did. Please watch that goal back. Because there's a ball onto Bamford. I'm watching the game with my partner, my brother, the kids. Well, they're running about, but I'm watching the game. I'm going, give it Bamford, give it Bamford. He doesn't. There's Costa out on the right. There's an option there. He doesn't. Dordles on it, and he's dispossessed. And that's what caused the goal for me. Um, that's just my opinion. Please watch it back. You might disagree. A lot of people might say position. There was no one in the middle of the park. I get it. But for me, Click shouldn't get challenged there. He shouldn't get challenged. And that's what leads to their goal. But listen, Preston deserved it. First half, they were they were streets ahead. Um, I think we have a chance around the t between 27 30th minute. Alioski has an opportunity. And then we started to create. We did start to get a little bit more of the ball. Because up until that point, it was just non-existent. Um, I think Alioski had a chance... You know, just uh, just earlier in the first half, slightly, 
Um, but look, that first half w w wasn't great. Uh, first 25, 27 minutes I've got down. I would say it's probably the worst we've seen under Bielsa definitely this season. Defence were making errors all over the shop, which is it's just not been uh, a thing of ours um, this season until Cardiff. Cardiff seems to have knocked the stuffing out of us. Genuinely. A real worry. As if to say, well, we're not as assured as we were. And that's what seems to be happening, genuinely. The old leads creeping back in. That's how I feel. Quite, quite pinpointing. Because we should win this game. We should. We should win this game. Not on the face of it just before, you know. We should win this game. Cardiff shouldn't have happened. Cardiff doesn't happen. Do we steamroll Fulham? You know, has it really set the cat amongst the pigeons? And there needs to be some real mental toughness. We need to get past this now. We need to get back to winning ways. And we have to against Birmingham. And then to get maximum points and, and, and beat West Brom would be absolutely amazing. Because they're, they're... Listen, let's not kill ourselves. They're unreal. They are unreal. Um, but yeah, pre pressing North, North End deservedly led. Um, and then the second half comes around. And I even put my note. This is where we need to prove that we're in for the fight. We really need to prove it. Because it... I speak about that mental toughness. People say footballers don't, you know, take notice of other results. It's bullshit. Of course they do. Um, they'll have seen. And that, you know, it's a real, come on, we need to get something from this game. And we managed to do that, you know. So so I'm over over the moon from that. You know, a lot of people won't see positives from this game due to that such dire performance in the first half. But we had a lot of opportunities in the second half, 47 minutes, two minutes in, absolute perler of a ball from Jack Harrison, makes its way over to Bamford, um, and it's a shite touch, it's a poor touch, it's a poor touch, Bamford wasn't great tonight, um, <clears throat> a lot of it was the service, a lot of it was how good Preston were, pressing high, um, but look, it, it, the substitution was the right thing for me, and I really liked to see it, I loved how direct he was, you know, he had, he had an opportunity. It was a great save by Rudd. Point blank, bam, I'm thinking he scored. There was one where he got it round Huntington and Huntington brought him down. But that I love that directness. I love it. And, um, you know, th this is what I'm going to say, right? I think we're going to lose Eddie. I genuinely believe we are. Look, look at it from Arsenal's perspective. Look at it from Eddie's perspective. The kid hasn't started one game. We've now played every team in the Championship. We're on our second run of games. We're past Christmas and he's not started one game in this league. I don't want him to go. I hope he can stay. But from an Arsenal and Eddie perspective, come on. Why wouldn't you? The kid's got talent. He plays for England. He's bagging goals left, right and centre when given the opportunity. He can go do that somewhere else. Why wouldn't you? He has no affiliation at Leeds. He's not going to be here long term. You know, so I, I, I think he might go. But look, we've seen tonight. That's what I love about how direct he is. And he does have a job to play. Listen, a lot of people don't like Otter. I really like him. He had a remit for me first season. Hence, we got a lot of dross. That changed. Purse strings were opened up a bit. We brought some more quality in. Okay? If him and Angus, etc. can keep hold of Eddie and pull that rabbit out of the hat, then hats off to them. Because that would be amazing. Because they have a real job on their hands. Who are you bringing to replace him? Who's going to come in and sit on the bench? Because, listen, the look at the Eddie situation. I think how talented that boy is. And if he can't get in over Bamford, I'm not slagging Bamford, I'm just looking at it from the outside, looking in. They're going to go, well, why am I going to go there? The had Eddie, who was an absolute baller. Not one star. So I'm not going to go there and sit on the bench. The only answer is Edmondson for me. I was speaking to Connor about it. Edmondson's not ready, but who else is going to be willing to come down and sit there? You know, there was talk of Jay Adams, etc., etc. They're not going to be willing to come and sit on the bench, man. They're not. Um... But that's my little Eddie rant because I just thought he played well tonight. When he came on, he was defending in our own box. When he came on, he was direct and he almost scored. Um, it was it was a, a brilliant save. Um, but we did really start to knock on the door uh, from about the 65th minute for me. Um, there was the save from, from Rudd. There was an opportunity as well before that, just before that. Uh, it's crossed in. Alioski point blank absolutely blazes it over. He needs to shoot from distance. He ain't too great up close. I think it's a composure thing. Um, he had a lovely effort, of course, uh, late, later on. I think it was around about the 70 minute, the 75th, uh, sorry, that Cannon's off the post. Sweet strike, sweet strike. 
Um, and I'm just begging for, for Leeds to get one. It didn't look like it was going to come. Uh, it was so soft start around about the 80th minute. We couldn't keep it in play. It was just getting really frustrating and I was really starting to worry. Um, there was a number of saves by Rudd. They, they defended so resolutely. That's what I mean. A lot of people won't take positives, but there were some in there because we did create a lot of, uh, of opportunities in, in that second half. Um, and then Stewie Dallas pops up. Yes, it's a deflected goal, but that guy... He's been my player of the season. He's played all over. Um, some people might not like him in that midfield role. I get it. But for me, he's got a real heart, real desire. And for him to pop up with it, yes, it took a wicked deflection. But just absolutely relieved and absolutely buzzing to be coming away with something from the game. Um, look, when we got that, I genuinely thought we were going to go on and win. I have, you know, like memories of last season, Boxing Day. Just how much pressure was getting put on at that point. And I'm thinking we're going to go win this game. Six minutes get put up. Yes, there's still time. We're going to go win it. It wasn't to be. But look. Second place, eight points over Brentford. We need to really watch Brentford. There's, there was talk of Fulham in the past, talk of Preston, you know, talk of Notts Forest, Swansea, etc. None of them need to worry for me. No Fulham, no nothing, no consistency there. However, Brentford really seemed to have turned that screw a little bit. The likes of Ben Rama, um, of course, Ollie Watkins, I was saying, nah, he's not a striker, no need to worry. That's changed, he's got his highest goal tally uh, in his career. Um, you've got uh, uh, Buemo, who's just scoring goals for fun. Um, they're just unreal, um, and you know we really need to be worried about them. So we have to take advantage of opportunities like was today, and we didn't. It was only a point, but we still have eight points. That's our saving grace, we have eight points over third. That means we now to obviously need to go get maximum points away at Birmingham. We have to do that. But look, take the positives. There were so many chances in the second half. We've come away with a point. We haven't lost a game. We're eight points over third. Okay? Three behind top spot, but they don't care for top spot. But we must beat Birmingham ahead of that New Year's Day fixture against West Brom. We can't wait for it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please sponsor me for Red January. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think, and I'm going to leave it there. Peace now. Merry Christmas. Leads, leads, leads.